all learners. Welcome to our session today. I am your instructor, CPA Aringo Frederick. So it's a continuation of our what we've been doing earlier on. So in our class today, we are going to introduce a whole new concept, and that is simulation analysis. Simulation analysis, a very important concept that is going to assist us to work out any problems for simulation. So maybe introducing simulation, ideally was the main concept behind simulation. If you hear the term simulation, what will come at the back of your mind? Simulation ideally is kind of imitation, right? It's kind of um, imitating a real world process into what? Into form of a system. In that, yes, this something is existing. So what you want to do is kind of, I want to imitate that item that is existing. Ideally, that's the whole concept, or that is the main uh, talk of uh, idea of simulation. Kind of what? Kind of imitation. Kind of imitation. Now, bringing it into a business perspective. When we'll be talking of simulation, what will we be looking at? How is it important when I'm dealing with uh, when now we'll be dealing with simulation in business. So ideally, this is the main concept that I'll want us to look at in our class today. Ideally, application of simulation in business. So we normally tend to look at it in so many ways where simulation can be applied. But in our class today, we are going to focus on application of simulation specifically in inventory control. Remember, uh, simulation is also applied in a CVP. But in our class today, basically, we are going to dwell with simulation in what? Simulation in uh, inventory control. But before we go there, I'll give you the whole idea behind simulation. Just as you mentioned, simulation is imitation of the operation. We say that simulation is kind of imitation, imitation of the operation, imitation of the operation imitation of the operation of a real world process of a real world process or system process or system this is a key element that you should understand when you are talking of simulation then we have went ahead and uh, we've uh, also mentioned we went ahead and uh, also you said that uh, whenever I'll be looking at a uh, simulation how is it important now in our how is it important in our business how is simulation important in our in our business so simulation my good student will find that uh, this one is normally used simulation is normally used simulation simulation is normally used simulation is normally is normally used to assess the current, to assess the current, to assess the current, <coughs> or predict, to assess the current, or uh, predict, to assess the current, or uh, predict the future performance, the future performance, or predict the future performance, the future performance of a business process. Of a business process of a business process ideally you'll find that now when we are digging in simulation in business where or how is it applied when it comes to business so we are saying that simulation is normally used to assess the current or predict the future performance of a business of a business process one key element that you must always have at the back of our mind now, the moment you've talked of that, my good students, I'll also want us to look at the areas where simulation can be applied in business. So in this case, we are talking of application of simulation analysis, areas of application, application of simulation analysis in business, application of simulation analysis in business. Where is it being applied? Because first key element that we've mentioned, we are talking ideally of imitation, of 
uh, talk of uh, imitation of uh, a real world uh, process or system. The whole idea behind uh, simulation. And at this point you're saying that I can use simulation to assess the current or, and also to predict the future performance of, of a business. Key element that you must have in mind. Now looking at application of simulation in business, you'll find that these are the areas where simulation can be applied in business. Number one area that you normally talk about, you normally talk of inventory analysis and control. Inventory analysis and control. And this is the area that I'll be looking at in our class. Also talk of, uh, it can also be used in uh, financial forecasting and budgeting. Financial forecasting, financial forecasting and budgeting. Uh -huh. We can also use simulation in analyzing capital investment, in analyzing capital investment, in analyzing capital investment. You can also use simulation analysis in analyzing capital investment. Also key element, you can use simulation in make or buy decision, in make or buy decisions make or buy decisions uh -huh. and uh, so many areas including analyzing including analyzing including analyzing or uh, planning and controlling the budgetary process planning and controlling talk of our planning and controlling planning and controlling so my good students will find that we are not limited to these applications only but you'll find that simulation analysis can be applied in so many areas when you are looking at it in business, when you are looking at it in a business perspective, when you're looking at it on a business perspective. Now, the moment you've grasped that one, my good students, the next component which is very, very important, you'll find that as much as we'll be talking of simulation and we say that it can be used in so many areas, not only in business, you'll find that simulation can also be used in medicine. Simulation can also be used when it comes to IT. Simulation can also be used in legal. So you'll find that simulation is kind of a very wide concept that it can be applied in so many, in so many areas. And the whole concept, as you mentioned here, when you are talking of simulation in business, these are the areas of application when you are talking of it in terms of what? In terms of business. But as you've mentioned, you'll find that simulation can be applied in so many areas, which will include legal, it will include the aspect of information technology or IT. We can also sim use simulation in medicine. So it's kind of a whole uh, and a wide, a wide form of a concept. But our area today that we are talking about, you're looking at application of simulation in business. And whenever we are talking of application in business this will apply to those students who are doing business courses which will include say for example when you are talking of cpa the students who are doing qa section four students who are doing management accounting section two those who are doing talk of uh, advanced management accounting section five this concept is very key because it's the same concept that's going to apply in all these areas when you are talking of in business. So always, whenever you are talking of simulation in business, one name should always click at the back of our mind as business students. And this is Monte Carlo simulation analysis. This is a concept that should apply any time I'm looking at simulation in business that is a name that should always click at the back of our mind as business students. So, looking at Monte Carlo simulation. Monte Carlo simulation, a very common method of simulation. So, we are talking of Monte Carlo simulation. Monte Carlo simulation. Monte Carlo simulation. Monte Carlo simulation. Because you'll find that always when you are looking at it in a business perspective, whenever we'll be talking about simulation analysis, Monte Carlo simulation is always very common and actually is the one which you normally tend to use in all the areas of our business, in all the areas 
of our of our business so you'll find that monte carlo simulation this is a form of simulation that deals with the location of random numbers it is a form of simulation that deals with a location it deals with a location of random numbers it deals with a location it deals with a location it deals with a location of random numbers key element that you must always have in mind we are saying it deals with a location of it deals with a location of random of random numbers it deals with a location of it deals with a location of random numbers and also another key element that you should grasp at this point you'll find that uh, the basis of this method is experimentation on chance the basis of this method ideally is on experimentation of chance or probabilistic elements or probabilistic elements and ideally this is done through sampling this is done through this is done through sampling this is done through sampling so you'll find that whenever we are talking of monte carlo simulation we are seeing first of all i'll be dealing with the allocation of random numbers and in looking at this case we are saying that our main area will be on experimentation of chances and the key element that should click at the back of our mind is that i'll be dealing with the concept of probabilities i'll be dealing with the concept of probabilities probabilities so now what are some of the steps that you must always consider when you are talking of monte carlo simulation so steps that you must always have in mind steps in monte carlo steps in monte carlo simulation steps in monte carlo steps in monte carlo simulation steps in monte carlo simulation you'll find that they are always very common anytime you are looking at simulation so looking at these steps of monte carlo simulation my good students number one step that you must always do number one step that you must always have we normally tend to talk of we have to set up this is number one step we have to set up probability distribution we have to set up probability we have to set up probability probability distribution probability distribution we have to set up probability distribution for the relevant random for the relevant for the relevant for the relevant random variables for the relevant random variables for the relevant random variables so you are saying that always when i'm talking of monte carlo simulation step step number one that you must always consider is to do what is to set up probability distribution for the relevant for the relevant random variables i should be having the concept of the variables that we'll be having number two what you must consider is what number two when you'll be looking at monte carlo simulation my good students it will be upon us to build up cumulative build up cumulative build up cumulative build up cumulative probability distribution build up cumulative probability distribution build up cumulative probability distribution for each for each for each for each variable for each variable for each variable for each variable and allocate and allocate and allocate the random number ranges and i would rather build up the cumulative probability distribution for each variables 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 of course the variables that you've talked about these are the variables actually you can add the variables in step one the variables in step one build up cumulative probability distribution for each variables in step one because remember here we identified the random variables 
Then step number two, we are saying we have to build up cumulative probability distribution for each what? For each variables. And these variables are the one that we identified in step number one. That should take us to step number three. We need to establish the intervals. Establish. Establish the intervals. Establish the intervals. Establish the intervals of the random numbers of the random of the random numbers 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 for each variable for each variable for each variable for each variable and allocate the random number ranges and allocate the random number ranges and allocate the random number ranges and allocate the num random number ranges so we are saying that anytime we are looking at uh, this step number three this is what we should do we need to establish the intervals of the random numbers for each variable and allocate the random number ranges so now we have our cumulative probability the other part that you are doing, I need to allocate these intervals. I need to prepare or we need to establish the intervals of the random numbers for each of the variable. And hence, for we are going to allocate what the random number ranges. And as we'll be doing a question just right now, you will find that this concept will be very, very easy for us to understand the whole concept of it. Now, after you've looked at a step number three, that should take us to number four, step number four, which is very key. Obtain the random number. Obtain the random numbers. Obtain the random numbers. Obtain the random numbers. Obtain the random numbers. And in this case, they can be obtained in so many cases. The random numbers can be obtained in so many ways. Whereby, we can use random number tables. We can use calculators. We can use computers, etc, etc. And the beauty part of this case, for the purpose of our exams, we'll always be given these random numbers. And what you should understand and mark at the back of your mind is that these random numbers, you'll find that they are going to be allocated on the variables that we'll have. And how will we know that this is a variable and this is not a variable? Any component that is going to be attached with probability, that one will always be a variable. That one will always be a variable. Then step number five, which is the last step, we need to run the simulation trials. Run simulation trials run simulation trials run simulation trials so you'll find that anytime when you are talking of monte carlo simulation my good students anytime when you are talking of monte carlo simulation you will find that it will be very very key for us to understand these steps for us to understand these steps so in our class today the objective was for us to understand the concept of simulation we should understand where simulation is normally being applied in our business. And we say that whenever you're talking of simulation in business, Monte Carlo simulation procedure or Monte Carlo simulation process will always click at the back of our mind. And we went ahead and looked at the steps in Monte Carlo simulation. So our main class of today, which uh, our main area was, I wanted us to look at simulation analysis in inventory control in inventory control so to this point for us to understand the concept clearly allow me to erase here because i've given you the basis of what you require to know anytime you are dealing with simulation so the next point i'll want us to look at how will we apply how will we apply simulation in inventory analysis and control 
how will you apply simulation in inventory analysis and control which of course you're going to work with our past papers which of course you're going to work with our past papers so i want you guys to join me in the next session whereby we are going to handle a question for simulation analysis thank you so much and let us meet in the next session thank you